Hello everyone, this is Ali, and this video is the fifth episode of War vs. My YouTube channel where I analyze the lore of characters from the Warcraft and World of Warcraft series of games and oppose them to decide who will win in the duel to the death. The point is to know who is the best, of course, but the main purpose is to share my view of interesting what ifs. I'm from France and English is not my native language. Please tell me if you hear any mistake and tell me in the comments. Liadrin and Nubundo appeared at the same time with the release of World of Warcraft's first expansion, The Burning Crusade. At the time, shamans could only be played by rolling as a horde race and paladin by rolling as an alliance race, and the inclusion of blood elves and drainers into the game changed that. The law of blood knights was added to allow blood elves to roll as paladins, and that of the broken shamans to allow the drainer to play as shamans. The stories of Yadrin and Nabunda were meant to reflect this, as they were both the first to offer these opportunities with their races. As such, their stories are quite similar, and they were directly opposed by the war between the Blood Elves and Draenei until the defeat of Kil'jaeden and the resurrection of the Sunwell. Since then, they are often parallel as the leaders of their respective class orders and their respective factions, and their stories of lost faith and renewed hopes are very similar which is why I want to make them fight of a death. Yep, for the Adrian, I'd assume that a current pick is right now, during the course of a sixth expansion of World of Warcraft, Legion, having acquired a great deal of battle experience and the legendary sword Quelgala. It's a bit more complicated to determine the part of his life when Nabunda was at his best, but since we're definitely taking his broken version into account, it appears clear that his peak is at the same time, during the Legion expansion, so that he may have as much battle experience as possible. Yadrin and Nabunda both symbolize the heavy struggles endured by their people and the drastic changes of power that it took from them to find an impossible way to renew hope. They both follow different paths and tirelessly sought redemption for their failures and their relationships to members of the other faction make them an important factor for the peace between the Alliance and the Horde. Their mirror images are what the Alliance and the Horde found to save themselves in the culture of a usual enemy, and that's why I'm making them fight over death. Because, well, you know, fun. And to know who's the strongest between Paladins and Shamans. Not gonna pick a side here. To ask why we fight is to ask why the leaves fall. It is in their nature. Perhaps there is a better question. The fight would occur in the eye of a storm the chaotic battleground of Outland near Neverstorm where Draenei and Blood Elves were often opposed to the control of the raw energy just lying there. It's hard to imagine what could draw Liadrin and Nobunda to oppose in a death match, but I think one possibility could be their refusal to see any more lies from the Alliance and the Horde lost from control of the Eye. They would have agreed on a one-on-one, -on -one, definitive duel by orcish tradition so that the matter could be settled with only one last death. Always ready to sacrifice themselves or others, Liadrin and Nabunda would have agreed to put their lives at stake. The winner would have gained control of the entire place for their faction. Liadrin would enter the field with a redemption armor, her blood knight tabard and mounted on her Fadassian war horse, Quedera in hand, Nabunde would have come with a cyclone armor and a heavy hammer of an arrow he wields slowly. Both would slowly walk up to the center of battleground, at the edges of a central rock bridge, and then at each other, without saying a word for a while, and willing to kill someone they know is honorable, but ready to go all the way through if necessary. Liadrin would clearly be the first to attack, charging on her horse to hit Nabunde with full force and end it quickly. Before the broken would make a move, she would strike his head through the light and hold from a distance in order to force him to stay in place and be struck down. This 
was exactly what the Broken would have anticipated, however, since this is obvious Paladin's strategy, and would wait for the last moment to use the power of the wind to free himself from the light's hold and propel himself forward, slightly to the side, while setting the head of his armor on the back of the horse's legs. Ladrin would understand the trap, but too late. Redemption's legs would be shattered by the hammer strike, breaking under his own force and that of the wind. The horse would collapse and slip into the nether with a horrible cry of pain, her mistress landing brutally on the ground on the other side of the bridge. Yadrin would be dismounted, but safe, and extremely hungry. Nabunda would turn around, Yadrin would rise up, and the opponents would face one another again for a second before moving again. The Draenei knows that Yadrin completely dominates him physically, and now she knows that the spells she can use to hold him in place won't work. This means she'll try to get to him as fast as she can. This means fleeing. When the Blood Elf starts gleaming and walking ominously toward Hadanu, a threatening child in her golden eyes, the only thing Nobundu can do is turn around again and dash away thanks to the power of the wind his feet barely touching the ground. His plan is to stay at a distance and attack from afar with spells, but Yadrin, as a former warrior and prominent physical combatant, is much faster than the Broken would expect. She would dash across the bridge like a lightning and reach the other side in no time. Not faster than Nubundo, but too fast for him to quickly get away. The Broken would find himself confronted with a pissed off blood knight and would owe his life only to the sturdiness of his hammer, able to parry and deflate a violent strife from Queldala. The crystal would hold, but not the shaft, and under Liadrin's sheer holy strength, the hammer of the Naharu would break, leaving Nabundo with only a staff to defend himself. Ready to strike down judgment upon her enemy, Liadrin would raise her sword and aim for the head, screaming. Her hand, however, would be pulled back at the last moment by a strongest of wind. Nobundo, in an effort to save his life, would have unleashed the wind against her to loosen her grip of Quedala and disarm her in order to even the fight. Yadrin would hold on to the sword with all her strength and a natural wind trying to pull it away from her, and Nobundo would land heavy thrusts of his staff in her face and gut in order to make her drop the sword. He could be way more offensive if he wanted to, but this is not his specialty, and the shaman still has the hope of subduing his enemy to end the fight without bloodshed. His blows are heavy, but Liadrin can take it with only her patience being damaged, and would end up grabbing Nabundo's staff with her other hand. Both held up against each other, Liadrin would use her superior agility to kick Nabundo to the gut and face while holding onto the weapons, and while this would hurt, he can take much more than that. This would be a battle of patience. Obviously lost by Liadrin, he would, well, let go of the sword and bury her heavy armored fist in the broken face. Who would be thankful for once that it doesn't have a nose? Dismayed, Nobundu would be held to the ground, viciously beaten by Liadrin, with only his sullen arms to defend himself. A broken bone later, he would do the only thing he can still do. Thinking she has proved herself superior of nothing but her physical strength, Yadrin would be rather overconfident. She would not raise her defenses and be surprised when winds suddenly come hurling from all sides and shake her violently while entering Nabundo's flesh and briefly making him into an air ascendant. The twirling silhouette of a drain eye would rise up in the air, lifted by pure elemental power. Yadrin would refuse to let him go, it will hardly do more than holding on without being heard away into the nether. While Nabundo is healing himself, in a half step of meditation, she would rely on her last and greatest weapon, the light. Illuminating her entire body, her immune strength will allow her to oppose the power of the elements and grab onto the enemy, screaming and making holy fire rain upon the both of them. They would turn for a second and have their own combined powers and then the explosion of the spells would propel the both of them away from the other. Nabundo would be thrown away onto the edge of the eye, risking a fall, while the Adrin's armor and greater resistance would leave her falling at the entrance of the bridge. 
both would be heavily wounded, maybe a broken limb or two, with scars on Yarun's face and burns all over Nabundo's body. He would barely be able to move, and would not stand so. His focus would be to heal himself rapidly, fix his limbs and mend his flesh. Yadrin, still bathed in a sacred hollow, would be rapidly regenerating herself and would not fail to seize the occasion while her opponent is weak. Her hair detached and her tabard gone, the blood elf would run to Nobundo and use her full knowledge of light against him, transferring her own pain onto him. This would be enough to make anyone howl in pain, but Nobundo has seen worse. Without fear, he would remain close to the edge, chanting to the elements to mend his body and slow Yadrin's advance with wind. The angry blood knight would get closer and closer nonetheless, showering Nobudo with holy judgment. The broken, however, is completely used to the pain, and the horrific burning and regrowth of his flesh would only leave him in a robust state of trance. Since he's not moving, Yadrin is trying to reach him and push him off, but once close to the drain eye, she would find herself unable to move farther. Normally, she would just keep burning him with a light, but Nobuto seems to feel most no pain to be immune to the suffering brought by her judgment. Frustrated and impressed, Yadrin would consecrate the ground and make the rock itself burn in holy fire, doing anything she can to attack. At this moment, Nobundo would heavily stomp the ground with his foot, then seem to lose all his focus and tremble, exhausted by his efforts. Gladwin would feel the resistance of the wind vanish and would dash to finish her opponent immediately. Nobundo counted on this, however. As the light closes in to burn him, the far seer would shift to the astral plane and basically phase through Gladwin with no harm, becoming physical again behind her. Turning around, Yadrin would understand the trap. The cracks on the ground are already visible. The very earth Yadrin is standing on is aiding her enemy and crumbling at her feet to drop her into the twisting nether. Running like hell to try and survive, she would end up falling among the debris and grabbing onto the remaining edge by one hand, with the window standing over her. The hooded and disfigured silhouette of a broken would loom over for a minute, silent while she frantically tries to climb up and find a way to survive. He would then kneel down and offer his helping hand while stating, Now, Lady Yadrin, you have lost. Being faced with the choice of taking his hand and risking betrayal and slowly slipping to death, Yadrin would actually hesitate. In the end, she would take the broken's hand, guided by what she recognizes as faith. The shaman would help her, saving her life, and once on her feet, she would understand that now she simply couldn't attack again. All that would be left to do would be to concede defeat, meaning that she had indeed lost. Both wounded and heavy with thoughts for the future, the Adin and Nobunde would help each other limp back to their respective encampments. Both would stand by their decision. Nobunde would think of a blood knight who had faith in him, when they were trying to kill each other the second before. Gladwin would think of a wretched, shamanic creature who had reached the position of the eye of a storm rather than kill cold blood. His deal has probably not settled that issue, but it certainly has and should renew trust between blood elves and drain eye for the future. Thanks for watching this video! I was interested in making something about characters who are not necessarily on the forefront of the main law. They're sometimes more interesting than bigger figures, and since these two never met, I wanted to do exactly that. Next time, I'll take the opposite direction and show a fight between none other than the two most powerful creatures of the entire Warcraft floor. As a rough might get destroyed a bit. Oh well. Subscribe and like if you want to see that happen, and until next time.